I love sunflowers because they are such happy flowers and today I'm bringing you some easy sunflower themed DIYs. This video is part of my monthly playlist that I host with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and this month our special co-host is Brenda from Rustic and Lace. Their channels and the playlist will be in the description box below. I hope you get some inspo from today's video but before we start our projects I wanted to tell you that on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. The first two DIYs are inspired from an Etsy listing that I saw. Her flowers and crows were just so stinking cute. I just knew I had to recreate them. And I'm going to have a link to Miss Heidi's house's Etsy below. So in case you want to check it out and see what else she has. I created very similar shapes and made some templates. I traced the shapes onto some wood that I got from Lowe's and used my jigsaw to cut them out. And then let's start off talking about sunflowers. To make the center, I use I took some Waverly wax in the color antique and I got this sponge applicator from Dollar Tree and I just kind of put it in the color, then dabbed off the excess and placed it in the center and kind of pressed down evenly and firmly to to make the center thing. And then I took this little scrap of cloth and I tried to carefully dab off the excess and I, I tried to be careful because I did like the crisp center but it's not perfect and that's okay. Y'all I'm not a painter but I love to try different techniques and or really <laughs> just gonna make up my own and see how they work out so I took two different yellows and on a scrap piece of paper I made a line with both of the colors like side by side and the idea was to be or like to have a two-toned look so my I took my paintbrush and I did the first stroke and immediately saw that I needed to do a base coat. I took folk art paint in the color white and painted all the way around the flower and I was just trying to start in the center and go outward. I was hoping to preserve, the, preserve that center which was you know a pretty circle <laughs> but I know crafting isn't meant to be perfect so I don't stress too much when something you know quote unquote messes up. I either try to fix it or just accept it you know it is what it is. And you can see that the center had a little mishap and that's fine. I'm just working with that and taking the two tones of yellow and I start at the edge of the center and then paint outward. It's not that easy to see, but I'm trying to mimic the colors and dimension of like real life petals. So same process and concept for the stems, although for the stem, I'm using three different colors. For the center, I knew I didn't want it just to be one color, so I'm taking three different colors. And as you can see, I have Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I have a beige kind of-ish color and a black. And I'm taking this small dabber thing and I'm just using it to put like little dots or circles onto the center. And I'm just trying to kind of layer it on and build that up until I think it looks more dimensional and not so flat. I think these turned out pretty cute and they will look super fun on my tiered tray. Y'all, I'm getting better and better with my jigsaw, so I'm taking these two wood shapes and I'm going to turn them into crows. Caca, caca. <laughs> and my Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Chalk Paint in the color Charcoal is getting a little dried out, but it's still working. So I'm painting both of these shapes all over with that color. Chalk paint gives good coverage and although this paint is on the pricey side, I think it's like around $13 for this size can. Anyway, it's lasted me for forever, so I think it's worth it. For part of the project, I drilled a hole using the drill press in the, our garage, but y'all, look, a spider. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, and you're like right by the switch to turn it on, go away. We got past the spider situation and as you can see I was able to drill the holes in the top. To make the eyes I am using that same folk art paint in the color white and that same dauber sponge thingy and putting the eyes close together. Now for this part I did kind of have to twirl that sponge thing a bit just to make sure the circle had enough paint and coverage. For the beak, I just kind of drew on the shape that I needed and I took some of the darker yellow and started painting it in. It did take several coats and I had to make sure that each coat was dry enough, you know, had enough drying time in between before I started painting again. 
I grabbed that little sponge dauber thing again and dipped it in the black paint to make the eyes. And it made them a bit like cross-eyed because I thought, I don't know, I thought it looked more fun and whimsical. In the hole that I made, I added hot glue and then I put in a piece of twine. And on that first hole there, I put in way too much hot glue. So if you try this, make sure to leave a little room for the twine to actually go in. And then after I got both pieces of twine in, I just started unraveling the twine to kind of make it look like messy hair. And see, I'm just kind of unraveling it. And then I'm gonna take a little, this little pointed tool thing, like a picker, I use it to weed my Cricut stuff and so I'm just going to kind of separate those strands of the twine. This is how they turned out. I love them. They are super cute. They look super fun and I just think they're going to look so cute on my tear tray. All right y'all we're already on DIY number three so we're going to make a little mini grapevine wreath and I'm cutting a jumbo craft or popsicle stick to make kind of like a banner across the wreath. And I was going to leave it the natural wood color, but I ended up staining it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I hot glued it down, but in hindsight, I should have double checked the contact points on the back because not all the parts were touching, but I made it work. <laughs> I make it work though. And here is just me fiddling with that floral stuff. I am by no means a floral designer or anything like that. I just kind of place things how I think they're going to look or should look. And I add hot glue as needed and I try not to overdo it. I think less is more and they can always go back in and add more, but it's harder to take away when you've already hot glued stuff down. Y'all, I'm not using my Cricut for this one. I took a white paint pen and I wrote the word hello on the craft stick banner thing. I'm not really sure what you call it. I'm calling it a banner. This one was really super cute. It was fun and fast to make and it'll add a cute pop of color to either your tear tray or to a shelf. DIY number four and our last DIY for today is a wall hanging and I can't remember where I got this wood circle but you can find them or similar at Dollar Tree and as you can see I'm staining it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I bought some clothespins from the Dollar Tree and you can find the large ones in the laundry cleaning area and there are usually smaller ones in the craft area. I'm painting half on the tip with the Waverly Wax and the color antique. I'm not quite going to that little metal part. You can kind of see what I'm doing. And because I fancy myself as a Leonardo, um, <laughs> y'all, I was going to say DiCaprio, but that's not it. I meant like Leonardo da Vinci or something like that. But heck, anyway, I should have looked up someone famous for painting flowers or something, but I am an artiste and I'm doing that two-tone paint thing again. And I was going to make the metal, use this metal circle wreath thing to attach the clothespins to, and then I was going to attach all that to the wood circle, and then I thought, why? Let's just cut out that extra step and hot glue the clothespins directly to that wood circle, and here I'm just working on the placement of the clothespins. I hope you can see that I have staggered the clothespins. The ones with the brown tip are further in and all the yellow ones kind of hang off of the wood sign. And I'm just hot gluing them down. And I thought I'd take a second and tell you about my group, Crafty DIYs on a Budget. It's on Facebook and I run it with Sarah from GGB DIY who's co-hosting today. We are growing and we're having so much fun seeing all of the different projects everyone is working on. So y'all come join us. The link is gonna be below. And I'm using the end of this paintbrush. I just dip it in the paint to create some white dots onto each of the clothespins because I just thought they looked way too plain on their own. When it comes to the floral part, my technique is more of a, like I said before, the, you know, looks goodish to me. I go with that. So I try to add some and then see how it looks and I add more or, you know, just bit by bit. I'm trying not to overdo it. And if you notice, I am not using my Cricut for this one either. Y'all really can create super cute stuff without using a Cricut every single time. I just lightly traced the word on and then I took a white paint pen and I wrote over it. I added some twine to the back with hot glue. I covered it with masking tape because one time I saw Holly from Hot Humble Pine do it. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so I've done it ever since. I love how this one turned out. Marvin said it looked more like some sort of sun thing, but they are called sun flowers. So technically they should kind of look like the sun, right? Anyway, um, I just think it looks super cute. 
Here's another look at all of my beautiful projects from today. They turned out so great and I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I really do appreciate how y'all show love and support for my channel. I love creating and sharing, but most of all, I love being able to connect with each one of y'all. It's just amazing. Now, don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Great House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.